Hey, welcome to another video. In this one, I'd like to explore the creative process and some of the things that you go through when you create something, whether it be a photograph, a novel, a painting, a song, whatever it is, but some of the pros and cons of going through the creative process and some of the things that you're going to run into. Now, welcome to my messy office. I recorded this whole thing outside earlier this morning, but it, it's just been rainy and windy, and I, I didn't really like the sound quality. So here we are inside, round two. Now you ask, well, why should you take any thoughts or any advice from me when it comes to the creative process? Well, good point. These are my opinions, my thoughts, but I will say in my defense that as far as uh, people on YouTube who have photography channels, I'm sure I'm one of the few and maybe, who knows, maybe the only one who not only has sold images, but has sold fictional books worldwide on Amazon and been number one on Amazon on certain days. And I'm not talking about, uh, you know, photo books that some of the YouTube people have out. And that's not to disparage them because I own a lot of them, like Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle. Links in the no, there's no links, but I own them. I have that. I have Thomas Eaton's book. I have one that I recently got from Alan Schaller. Excellent book if you want to learn about not just street photography, but black and white and how he handles shadows and light. And so I'm not here to disparage people to put out photo books. I buy them. I, I really enjoy them. You can learn a lot from them. I'm talking about fictional books that are stories. And you have to go through the creative process of coming up with a plot, characters, the whole bit. And so I'm probably one of the few who can say that. The first thought about the creative process that I have is if you start the process because you want to make a lot of money, you want to be famous, you already lost. You're done. Don't do it. It's not worth it. I'm not saying it won't happen. I'm just saying if that's why you're doing it, the odds of you becoming successful are pretty slim. Uh, I would bet even famous authors, famous photographers, they're going to tell you that they didn't get in it to be famous. They got into it because they had a passion for it. They had a desire to want to create something. And if other people want to come along for the ride and enjoy their work, even better. But if you're doing it to make money, don't do it. You know, I, I started this uh, YouTube channel, I don't know, a year or so ago now, not to make money, but to me it was a challenge. It was to learn something new. I wanted to do something new. I was not necessarily bored with my photography, but it was a challenge. And that's why I create these videos, because to me, it was a, another avenue to be creative. When you produce something that you like, you enjoy, don't allow others to dictate to you whether you should like it or not, whether you enjoy it or not. Everybody has their own personal tastes. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you shouldn't listen to critiques. It's hard to know which critiques to listen to and which criticism to take because sometimes people that criticize and give you critiques have no idea what they're even talking about. And it's hard to filter through some of those things at times. So my only advice would be you take critiques maybe from people that you respect their work, whether it's a photograph or a story that you wrote. You know, it's easy to take a picture and stick it on Facebook and your friends and family all, oh, that's great. Yes, I love it. Well, when I take a picture of my grandson, 99 times out of 100, of course my daughter's going to like it. It's her kid. Is it a good photograph? I don't know. Good photograph of him, her, whatever. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. Don't allow others to dictate to you what your style should be and what it is you want to create. I wrote a series about a 
uh, an attorney who's a serial killer here in South Florida. And my mother and my wife do not like that series. I'm not even sure my wife read the whole thing. Uh, I think my mom did. Uh, my mom's passed on now, but uh, she used to get in my ear about it, partially because of the language, partially because of the content. But to me, for whatever reason, I enjoyed writing that series about as much as any of the series that I've written. I had to do a lot of research on, on serial killers and sociopaths and what drives them and what motivates them. And so here again, when I would get criticism of, oh, a, a serial killer would never act that way. Really? How do you know? I did a lot of research on that. And from the research I did, they would act that way. Can't allow others to tell you what it is you like, what it is you should photograph, what it is you should write, what, it, what songs you should write, what you should paint. If you're happy with it and you enjoy it, do it. One other point on that, if you go and watch 10 different videos, 10 different street photographers, most of the time, they can't even decide what street photography is and isn't. So if you go out and do street photography and somebody gets in your ear and says, well, that's not really a proper street photograph. Really? What's proper street photography? Most people can't tell you what it is. Thought number two, putting your work out there for other people to see takes some courage. It's not easy. Why do you think public speaking is so hard? People are afraid to get up in front of other people. When you show your photograph or, or allow your story to be in print to a stranger for the first time who really doesn't know you and doesn't care if they're polite to you or not, it, it, it can be challenging. And it's challenging for most, if not all people at first. Sometimes you have to learn to develop a thick skin I know when, uh, you know, when I first started getting criticisms from some of my writings, some of them were valid, some of them weren't. It took me a while to learn that. You're going to feel bad. There's going to be times when people are going to be critical of you. You have to learn to get through it. But it's okay, because sometimes you can learn through failure. In my uh, first novel, I wrote a beautiful song about a guitar player, Dylan James. And I tried to write it as if it was an autobiography, even though it was fiction. And in that story, I made the mistake of the character Dylan went to Juilliard. And I said that he took a business class at Juilliard. Well, I hadn't done enough research to know they don't have business classes at Juilliard, at least not in the 1980s. And I published it and put it out there. And somebody who went to Juilliard left a comment on Amazon and said, hey, I can, I like the book. I can only give it three stars though, because Juilliard doesn't have business classes. And I was, I went to Juilliard and I'm kind of offended that you didn't know that. That's proper criticism. He was right. He was correct. I didn't do enough research. So even though, yeah, you don't like hearing words like that, he was right. Later on, if I mention a street name or inside of a theater or what something looks like, I go to Google Earth and I actually look at it. Or I go to their website and I look at pictures. I see what it really is and I describe it for what it is. If it's a real thing, a real place, I make sure it's accurate now. So I had to learn that lesson. So sometimes critiques are good, but putting yourself out there like that can be difficult. Flip side is, you know, on this YouTube channel the other day, someone left a comment. He said, wow, those are great images. They should be in National Geographic. That's the flip side of it. It makes you feel good. So you have to learn to take the good with the bad. But putting yourself out there is hard. Any kind of creative process. I had someone do a, a review of one of my books. I searched out Amazon influencers and I asked one of them to read one of my books. He did, and he posted a one-star review, and he said, this was bad, and this was bad, and this was bad, this was bad. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what did I, you know, this book is not that bad. It's not the greatest thing, but it's not that bad. And at the very end of the review, he wrote, 
If I liked that type of genre, I would have liked that book. It was a good story and I enjoyed it, but I don't like that genre. And therefore I can't leave it a good review because I never liked that genre. Okay, so that's what I mean. Putting yourself out there can be hard. It's a step forward in the creative process and allowing others to see your work. And in the end, it's worth it. Next thought, and this one's kind of critical. Technical greatness does not equate to a good image or a good story or a good song or any other kind of creative endeavor. Technical greatness is reserved for very few things. You're going out and you're shooting landscapes. It doesn't have to be technically perfect. It has to be a good image. It has to be good. If someone is looking at the corner and saying, well, I don't know if it's if that lens isn't sharp from corner to corner, I, I, I don't know. People don't do that. Nerdy photographers like you and me do that, okay? Most people don't do that. If they're worried about if the corner is sharp or not, it's probably not a good image. If you're wor more worried about getting that focus stack right and you miss the light, you goofed. Get the image. Get it on film, get it on your card, get what you need to do. Don't fluff around with neutral density filters and this and that and worrying about everything being technically perfect. Take a good image. Focus more on being creative than being technically sound. I can't stress that enough. I'm going to prove my point to you. Do you know the song Louie Louie? Louie Louie, oh, okay. Just about everybody knows that song, right? It's been around forever. Do you know the words? I'm not sure the lead singer knew the words. Technically a good song? Horrible. How many soundtracks has that song been in? To this day, that song's probably playing on a radio somewhere. It's on some radio station. It's a classic. Technically, it's awful. But it's a great song. The book Fifty Shades of Grey sold a ton of copies. People liked the story. They made movies from that book. Is it technically written well, in my opinion? No. And I could probably name you a lot of books that aren't written all that well, but they people enjoy the story. They buy it for the story. They buy it for the characters. People look at your images, they like good images. They don't worry about what lens you used, what camera body you used. If it's a good image, nobody cares. The cameras and the lenses from the 60s and 70s, the majority of them, some of them have held up, yeah. The majority of them haven't. Yet the images from back in that era, there's plenty of still gr uh, that are great images. Why? Because they're great images, not because they're technically sound. They may have technical qualities about them. The light is good, maybe leading lines, whatever some of the uh, qualities about the photo that make you enjoy it are there. But sometimes the technical aspect of it can be overrated, in my opinion. It's better to work on the creative process and learn how to take a good image, more so than worrying about, well, which lens is the perfect lens, or as I say that, or why do so many photographers have multiple 50 millimeter lenses? It's not necessarily because one is technically better than the other, it's because the lenses have different characteristics and different qualities. Maybe you want a sharper lens. Maybe you don't. A lot of times, portrait photographers, they don't necessarily want the sharpest lens, especially for female skin. They don't like every little pore showing. Some people will disagree with that, and that's fine. But I'm just telling you, a lot of times, these fashion photographers, they're going to pick a lens that maybe is a hair soft. 
because that's the characteristic of the lens that they're going for. Look more for what suits your style, what it is you like to do versus what's technically important. When you write a story, worry more about your characters and the plot as opposed to, well, do I have too many adverbs? You can go back and rewrite and get rid of some of those things. But get the story on the paper first. Get it down. When the light is good in your photograph, take the photograph. Don't focus stack until after you've already gotten one shot, two shots that you like. Just my opinion. Next thought, patience. It takes time. It takes time to learn about your own creativity. And what I mean by that is, let's say when it comes to photography, it's going to take you time to learn what it is you like to photograph. You know, I, I had a, a dear friend, Tom McCartney, and he used to always bang on me. All you do is shoot birds and baseball. And it got me away from shooting birds and baseball a little bit until I realized at that time in my life, that's what I like to photograph. Maybe I should have continued it a little bit more. Granted, he forced me to expand my horizons and learn new things, and that's what he was pushing. But I liked what I liked, you know? And it, and it goes back to, I write the stories that I like to write. You know, I hope other people will enjoy it when it's finished. I do. I, I'm not trying to say, you shouldn't create something that you know people aren't going to like. Oh, I know intentionally they're not going to like this. I'm not saying that. If you enjoy it, other people are going to see that in your work. With, with your photography, if you really enjoy it and you like showing it to people, you say, hey, look at this. Isn't this, the, I went here and now they may look at it as, oh, it's just a travel photograph, who cares? But other people are probably going to enjoy sharing your feelings about it. It's important that you, when you're being creative, find your own vision. Find your own style. Find your own techniques. If it's with photography, find the focal length that appeals to you. There may be multiple, multiple focal lengths. You know, even as a landscape photographer, people, well, I, you know, sometimes I shoot a 20 millimeter, sometimes I like 50, sometimes I like a 100 to 400, depending on what it is I'm shooting. But the good photographers will still have a style. Years ago, I was listening to a uh, Crosby, Stills & Nash song, and I was listening to it very closely for whatever reason, and I'm listening to this little guitar work in the background of this song. I can't remember the name of the song now. That's Jerry Garcia. That's him playing guitar. And I went and looked in the liner notes, and sure enough, it was Jerry Garcia. That style. That's your own unique vision. I can look at certain photographs and tell you who the photographer was. You know, I can look at, say, certain nudes. If it's two women in a box, it's Ruth Bernhardt, most likely, or someone trying to copy Ruth Bernhardt. If it's certain images from Yosemite, it's Ansel Adams. There could people, people could try and copy Ansel Adams and go to the same locations and what, but I could probably tell you whether it's Ansel's or not. And there's other people like that. That's what, it's more important, in my opinion, to try and achieve that, to create your own unique voice. If you can do that, then people are going to follow you. People are going to appreciate you. But you have to be patient in developing that. I was reading this, this book here from Alan Schaller, and it only took him a few years to reach that level. That's pretty fast. But he was out there on a daily basis taking those images. For a while there, I might not take my camera out of the bag for two months. Well, it's hard to improve when your camera's sitting in the bag, right? I might not write a paragraph for six weeks in a story. It's kind of hard to improve if you're not working at it. You have to work at your craft. And so it's hard to say, well, you're not going to be good for two years, five years, ten years. It's, it's, not a, it's not a matter of that. It's a matter of how much drive, how much effort are you going to put into it? How much time are you going to spend with it? How 
badly do you want to get better at it? And you either will move forward quickly based on that, or you'll be held back. But it, either way, it takes patience. You have to work at it. Last thing would be persistence. Persistence, again, is, is hard. You know, I went and did a video where I went over to Worth Avenue in Palm Beach, which is a fancy, uh, it's a beautiful uh, street with a lot of high-end retail shops. And I made the mistake of trying to create a video for other people. Because I thought, ah, you know what? People from, I know I have people from around the world that watch these videos. And I thought, I let them see Worth Avenue. It's kind of a world famous street. It's probably been in some movies somewhere. As I know, The Breakers, which isn't far from there, has been in movies. So I thought, let me try and do a video from there. Nobody watched it. Uh, you know, I, I, I did get uh, one or two images from there that I liked, so it was worth doing. For me, it was fun. I hadn't been over there in a while. But I broke one of the rules of trying to do something for other people. Didn't work. Create for yourself, but be persistent. Don't let it bother you when other people don't care. There's times I put out a book, people don't read it. You know, and I'll spend six months or a year writing it, and you'll put a lot of effort into it, and you'll work hard at it, and you put it out, and no one reads it. You have to be happy yourself. You have to do it because you want to do it, because if you want to get better at it, you have to be persistent. You have to keep at it. Anyway, those are some of my thoughts on it. To me, the number one thing that you should take away, though, if you've made it this far, watching all the way through this, is to know that the, the journey of doing it is the joy in it, the passion that you have for it, to learn how to get better. That's why you do it. It's not to make a million dollars. But if you start out, you know, hey, I'm going to do this because it's going to make a million dollars. I know when I did my first book, A Beautiful Song, and I I put it out there and within, uh, I don't know what it was, a couple of days I'd sold a few hundred copies and I thought, wow, man, this is going to be easy pickings, man. I like this writing stuff. The sales fall off and you start thinking, what did I do wrong? I did something wrong. No, it didn't stop me from writing a second book or a third one or a fourth one or even a tenth one. It didn't stop me from doing that. What it made me do was, how can I get better? You know, what's the next step in the journey? I'm really enjoying this. And it's the same with photography. Okay, now I did this. Now I can go and learn focus stacking and, and other things to maybe technically make a better image. But I already know about lighting and composition and some of the other things that are important. The creative side. You know, I know how to use my camera now. I know what an aperture is. I know what a shutter speed is. I know what ISO can do, you know, to getting light quicker on that film or slower onto the sensor or whatever ISO said. I understand that. I know what it means. I know the, the ins and outs of how to technically make a, a, a decent photo doesn't mean I can create a good photograph, <laughs> you know. There's still a lot of other factors and you have to work at it. Learn your style. Emphasize that enough. Learn your own style. Learn what you like. Learn what lenses lend themselves to what it is you're trying to do. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did stay all this way, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Please leave a comment. Please like and subscribe. I never say that enough. I should say that in the beginning of the photograph. Please like and subscribe. How do you know if you liked it? You haven't even listened to the video yet. That's why I always say it at the end. Unfortunately, most people aren't here at the end. Uh, they missed out. Okay, till next time. Take good care.